In this video, I will present the biggest reasons why I have invested in Jivo. Someone posted this comment on StockTwits, and I will now list my top 5 reasons. Let's start with reason number 1. Jivo's position in the SAF market. The market for sustainable aviation fuel is predicted to grow exponentially in the coming years and is expected to continue to grow in the nearest decades, not only in the US, but globally. The predictions may vary between modest and really high estimates, but all studies show an impressive compound annual growth rate. One says 60% during a 10-year period between 2022 and 2032. Another study predicts the market will expand at a CHGR of 26% until 2050. CHGR, the compound annual growth rate, is the rate of return that would be required for an investment to grow from its beginning balance to its ending balance, assuming the profits were reinvested at the end of each period of the investment's lifespan. So with demand increasing each year, production volumes will need to scale up rapidly. And we're on the right path. SAF production increased by 200% last year, according to IATA. The best way to follow the progress being made is to go to ICAO's website, which provides a set of SAF tracking tools. It shows that announced offtake volumes has skyrocketed since 2019 and it more than doubled in 2022. The same development can be seen in the number of announced offtake agreements. So which companies are well positioned in this space? The stats show that Jivo is the leading company both when it comes to total offtake volume as well as number of customers alongside Neste. So my personal conclusion based on this information is that Jivo will be able to grab a big chunk of the market share if they can execute their business plan. So, a successful construction of Jivo's state-of-the-art production facility Net Zero One will be absolute key. And that's a risk I'm willing to take. Now for reason number two, Jivo's partners and customers. If you go to Jivo's Twitter account and click on any post, you'll often find very negative comments suggesting the whole company is a scam. These trolls may have good reason to feel angry and frustrated. They have probably lost a lot of money or they're short sellers. I'm sure there are plenty of scam companies out there on the market and that's why it's important to always do your own homework before putting your money in a stock. The FBI arrested him this morning after he told senior employees yesterday that his business was a giant Ponzi scheme. To the outside world, it was a successful DAX group. But in reality, it was riddled with fraud. Behind a clean facade, criminals were at work. If a company have made deals with somewhat shady or little known companies, it may be a red flag. In Jivo's case, they have managed to sign plenty of offtake agreements with a bunch of world-renowned companies like Delta, American Airlines, British Airways, Qatar Airways, Iberia, and Trafigura, and we also have BP for their RNG project. In addition to all these well-known customers, Jivo has also managed to partner with Google, the Department of Energy, and the Argonne National Laboratory. And then there are the potential deals with Chevron and ADM. But one partner that really provides credibility to Jivo's net zero business model is Axens. Jivo and Axens have established a strategic alliance aimed at accelerating the commercialization of sustainable ethanol to jet projects in the United States. The alliance means that Axens will bring technologies required to convert ethanol into jet fuel including more than 60 related patents, engineering packages, proprietary catalysts, and certain proprietary equipment, as well as providing process guarantees for commercial ethanol to jet projects. Axens has a long history of developing and commercializing best-in-class technology to convert olefins. For example, Saudi Aramco, which is currently the biggest oil company in the world. 
are using Accent's technologies. So Jivo's alliance with Accents brings a lot of credibility and also de risk the production technology. And now, my third reason. We're at the dawn of a new market, a new economic era, referred to as a bioeconomy. The Biden administration has already announced its strategy, and this article in Forbes magazine says the bioeconomy market is expected to grow globally to over $30 trillion over the next two decades. So, what is a bioeconomy, and how does it work? So the bioeconomy is an economy based on renewable biological resources. These resources may be converted into food, feed, bio-based products, or bioenergy. There are three key areas to the bioeconomy. Growing bio-based resources, turning these resources into bio-based products and services, and using bio-based waste to make new products or services. A replacement for many oil-based products can be found within the bioeconomy by making more use of bio-based resources and by moving away from a take, make, use, discard model to a take, make, use, recycle approach, our way of life will be sustainable for the planet, for us and for future generations. The bioeconomy is the future economy. The University of Hohenheim is looking to the future with bioeconomy. This research area is concerned with the economy of tomorrow, in which bio-based goods will play a major role in shaping our lifestyles. The European Union has joined forces with the Bio-Based Industries Consortium to create the circular Bio-Based Europe joint undertaking. Entirely new industries are born, bringing new jobs and sources of income to European regions. Together, we can switch from polluting and non-renewable fossil resources to a fully secular and sustainable bio-based economic system. We can join efforts to advance the circular bioeconomy to make Europe a climate-neutral continent by 2050. Drive the change and work with us to unlock the future of the circular bioeconomy in Europe. So the bioeconomy is set to be our future, as our way to tackle climate change. And this will be the economic landscape in which companies like Jibo will be able to thrive. Corporations that fail to make this transition will eventually go under, as the majority of capital and future investments will be transferred to the bioeconomy. What exactly is greenwashing? Well, it's when a company or organisation is misleading about its environmental credentials. It might involve terms like this, common words that you'll see on packaging and in advertising. And if you're confused about what they mean, you're not alone. Today, greenwashing has become a big problem for both consumers and investors. And the main reason is that the carbon credit market lacks transparency. But fortunately, blockchain technology will provide us with a solution. And Jivo is actually at the forefront of this area. They are developing their own blockchain platform called Verity Tracking. In collaboration with Farmer's Edge and Google Cloud, Jivo will be able to measure and verify all the carbon emissions across the supply chain utilizing Verity Tracking.
Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Lucas. I'm the lead uh, Europe for Verity. And I think um, I will not repeat that traceability is very important when it comes to carbon and sustainability markets. Uh, so I'm glad to show a real example applied in the case of the biofuel, how we can actually do that in practice. So now going more in details, how do we do this uh, exactly? We started the journey with Givo two years ago, um, which is a US biofuel producer. Um, and together with BlockSize and uh, Micobo, we basically created Verity as a spin-off um, and a dedicated solution and platform for the market. So together with Givo, we thought, how can we create a chain of custody using the blockchain to record all the inputs, all the carbon attributes and the carbon intensity score from field to flight, I say to flight in the example of an airline consuming the biofuel. And we didn't want to use for that paper-based reporting and, you know, Roth modeling where an auditor would go on site once a year and we don't really know what's happening. It's basically the baseline today. We wanted to do an automated life cycle assessment by connecting to the source data directly and building the ecosystem of partners that give us access to this data. So sensor data, IoT, satellite imagery, these are the type of things we're collecting at the feedstock level and then we continue um, down until the intermediate transport and the consumer. So what you understand from this approach is basically for the feedstock growers, the farmers, but also for Givo that takes these feedstocks and turn it into biofuel, they have a very verified and proven and traceable carbon intensity score, which is the basis for um, carbon credit claim um, or whatever carbon certificates that could be issued. And the good thing with these claims is that they cannot be manipulated, they cannot be double counted, and this is one of the big issues we have in the market at the moment. These claims can be tokenized and offered um, on carbon markets for buyers and investors, but they can also be bought, for example, to the um, airline company that needs low carbon biofuel, but also they may want to compensate for the emissions by buying the tokens um, and the credits attributed to the biofuel value chain. And then if you push the logic a little bit further, the airline company can sell back these credits um, to their clients, may it be Microsoft or individual passengers. Yeah, so to conclude, we have a few benefits for the entire industry, uh, creating incentives and revenues for sustainable farming, offering differentiated low carbon products in the market and generating premium credits, which you can turn into tradable uh, digital assets, um, providing more trust for buyers and investors in that field. If a bioeconomy with a blockchain-based carbon credit market is the future, Jibu should be very well off, since that future fits their game plan and business model perfectly. So this, together with their pole position in the SAF market and the pipeline of credible customers and partners are the top three reasons why I will remain a long-term shareholder in Jibu. But I will stop there for now. In my next video, I will conclude this list with reason number 4 and 5. Are you a Jibo shareholder? If so, please leave a comment and let me know the reasons why you believe Jibo is a good long-term investment. Please also leave a comment if you don't think Jibo is a good investment and explain the reason why you feel that way. And as a reminder, I would never recommend anyone to buy a certain stock, so you should not consider any of my content as financial advice. It's only pure infotainment. And my YouTube channel's main target group is people who are already balls deep invested in this company. I promise to return soon with a follow-up to this video that concludes my top 5 list. But until then, bye bye.